Clerk, you ready to begin your report? So we call to order the uh, August 24th regular meeting of the Pittsburgh Board of Commissioners and uh, begin with a moment of silence.
this on the same side. Yeah. that you might want to do a work session where we could talk to you about all the recommenda recommendations for the two different ordinances or um, the, potentially uh, the overlay district from the natural resource conservation ordinance could be used as a plan uh, used for reviewing um, development plans or um, possibly that one or both of these ordinances could be adopted as standalone ordinances or um, if you could give direction to uh, Clarion that they be incorporated into the uh, UDL work that they're doing. <coughs> My recommendation is that we already did that. Clarion, we do not agree with you with a lot of your time on it. That was the includes dovetailing that out those efforts. The, uh, uh, the timeline of the video, there are two parts, two modules. One is procedures for the standards. I work out procedures for one law and then we have that to start to show the timeline and the standards. And then the standards. Uh, it's very, very interesting uh, information, uh, both the details and information that are compiled uh, by the committee. And it's our intent as your UDO consultant to be reading that carefully and uh, then see uh, if, where, and how that recommendations might be uh, considered in the uh, putting that at the table on the other other materials. I think we did acknowledge that it was not a good idea to do the standalone given the fact that we've got lots of standalone right now right. We're trying to solve that issue and look incorporated into the UDO. But I think we also uh, were receptive to the idea of a work session. Certainly, I mean, it's it's available um, if you wanted to direct the staff to using that when they do reviews or yourself. I think we'd have to adopt yeah. it before we right. used it. So um, I'm available pretty much um, any weekend in September. Um, if you're still potentially thinking about a Saturday work session. Okay. September. September. I mean, just just a, you know what's coming up. Okay. 
another one Saturday, but right. okay. yeah, uh, yeah, I only mentioned Saturday because that's what Brooks said that it might be, but um, yeah, that's another day to the Okay. Well, I'm, I'm available during the week, too. Speaker Casey Mann. Mason. Good evening. I'm Casey Mann. I reside at 185 Tumor Loop here in Pittsburgh. And um, I am here today as a member of the AME Zion Church, Mitchell's Chapel, and um, to uh, offer a resolution for consideration. <laughs> Whereas the, dis the Durham District of the AME Zion Church will be holding its 90th, and that's 9-0, session of the district in Pittsburgh, here in Pittsburgh, on Thursday, August 27th, and Friday, August 28th. And as the district is comprised of a large number of AME Zion churches in Chatham County and around the Triangle, um, and the host church for this very important event is indeed Mitchell Chapel Church, which is located at 1025 Mitchell's Chapel Road here in Pittsburgh. Um, and the host pastor is Reverend Anthony Davis, also of Pittsburgh, North Carolina. I am asking that the Board of Commissioners for the Town of Pittsburgh um, offer a resolution to name Thursday, August 27th, as Mitchell Chapel uh, Day. And um, on behalf of the town, um, and welcome the attendees to the two-day conference and attend to the two-day conference here in Pittsburgh. Um, I have a copy of this here, and we sent it to Alice. Good evening. Uh, to be clear, Reverend Anthony Davis asked me to bring that. That's why Casey gave it to you. So it's pretty much ceremonial if the town does that or not. And you know, there'll probably be other members of the community coming to the readings. But that came from Reverend Davis. Good evening, Commissioners and Mayor Terry. And good evening to former Commissioner Ethel Farrell, who when I first came to Pittsburgh, you were on this board a long time ago. As a former colleague, I have learned to appreciate the vantage point from the audience. It's a different vantage point. I want to thank you for your hard work, and I also want to honor all the candidates running for election in Pittsburgh this fall. I've come to the last few meetings, and I think everyone's in the room, which says a lot about our community. Now, I may not agree with you, and I will compete with you, but at the end of the day, I will work with all of you to make Pittsburgh a better place and one of the best communities in North Carolina which I think that this board and previous boards have been doing. To that end, I want to raise a vexing issue that I believe that we, as leaders, must come together to stop cold, and that is false accusations against members of this current board and former members of the board. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, there were comments made at the June meeting that I attended, and at a recent July County BOC meeting, when Commissioner Fiocco represented the town of Pittsburgh, that frankly were false. 
And, and these comments imply that there's some level of corruption on the board. And this should not be. People can have opinions. They may not like the votes that are taken, but I don't think that that is something that we should allow, and I think that we should take a stand. Now, certainly, there's a difference of opinion in this room and in the community about the approved PDD and the master plan for Chatham Park, but I think that we can all agree that although committee members can come up and committee members can, committee members can come up and address the board and be vociferous in their opinions, I don't think we should allow folks to cast aspersions on this board and members of the board that are simply not true and former members of the board. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Randy. Well said. Thank you. That brings us to the end. Is anybody else on the other side? I think that's a lot. I'm not going to go on to the other side. Nobody was signing up. This is a public hearing. But they sent stuff to this one. And Jim was here. So I'm going to say that. So I'm going to say that. 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 Excuse me. Correct. This is crazy. Is it discreet, please? Mr. Mayor, members of the commissioners, good evening. I'm Roger Walden. I am uh, temporarily helping to run your uh, planning department while you are uh, seeking to uh, replace your former planner. So uh, I have been enjoying uh, my time in Pittsburgh and enjoying the meetings. And, uh, uh, okay, the uh, agenda item we have in front of you tonight is a request for uh, rezoning and special use permit for uh, to be referred to as Townsend Street townhouses. This is a uh, a, a small parcel, and the uh, it's right around the corner. It's very close, uh, and the uh, it's property that is currently uh, currently zoned C2. And the request is to, and there's a medical office building there, and the, and the uh, request is to, the medical office building faces East Street, the re request is to take the uh, about a third of an acre that is um, at front side Thompson Street, rezone that to R10, and authorize a special use permit for three townhouses. So uh, what you have in your packet is the uh, uh, location of the property and the uh, photograph, area photograph of the surroundings, and the uh, uh, the applicant's representation of what the townhouses might look like uh, uh, proposed to use the same model that's been, that's been built elsewhere. So public hearing tonight for uh, uh, you to hear from anybody who has an opinion on this, and then uh, following the, the public hearing, this will go to the planning commission for uh, review and recommendation, and then come back to you for for action. And as with uh, uh, any rezoning, one of the things that the Planning Commission will be asked to do is to prepare and, and submit to you a statement regarding consistency with the town's conference plan. So that will be coming to you in the following Thank you. I probably should start this by saying that nobody has signed up for a public hearing. Uh, I'm still doing the staff report. Do you represent the applicant? Yes. Would you like to speak Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, uh, commissioners and staff. I'm Mark Ashness with the C Group, uh, and we're representing the client K Diamond USA LLC. They also own the medical facility that fronts on 64 Business. Uh, and as Roger mentioned, it's somewhat of a unique parcel in that it has frontage both on 64 Business and on Thompson Street. Uh, given that fact, and the fact that the uses on Thompson Street are residential in nature, and the Looking into the future, the, the likelihood of more infill happening within the town proper, uh, we thought this would be a good good use of that land. So, uh, as Roger mentioned, the site is currently zoned C2, so we're seeking to rezone it R10 just on the back side that fronts Thompson, which is complementary to the existing uses on Thompson Street, and then requesting a special use uh, to to, uh, to build three townhome units. You can see there's off street parking, uh, so there'll be a side parking lot. Uh, coming directly off Thompson Street uh, with no drives in the front of the townhomes. And then uh, there'll be a sidewalk, obviously, in front of the townhomes also. And then I think you saw the uh, the uh, 
the elevation of what the units may look like. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions, questions? I've got a couple of questions for um, Mr. Walton. Um, so I think we're, we're looking at the request for a rezoning and a special use permit simultaneously. Are we therefore looking at a conditional zoning that ties the SUP to the zoning? I don't know. Okay. So they will be standalone. So if the SUP is granted um, and they choose to do something other than that project, they'll come back before the board with a different site plan? Yes. Okay. Um, and I, I think not only are we talking about rezoning a portion of the parcel, but we're actually subdividing the parcel. Is that correct? And we'll end up with four lots? One for each townhome plus a common area? That's correct. Yeah. So right now that's a single lot uh, that the office, the medical facility exists on. So this will essentially subdivide it into two lots and then ultimately you would have three town units and, and a common open space that the uh, association would own and maintain. Okay. And if the, the special use permit is granted with this level of documentation, will a site plan or a subdivision plan then come back before the board? for scrutiny of fine tooth details of the zoning ordinance, that subdivision ordinance. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I'm thinking that if we grant a special use permit, that's authorization to move forward without coming back with a site plan. I don't need a site plan because it's not commercial. So, so we would talk about minimum lot sizes and all those things at that time, and not during the special use permit process. Well, you should approve special use permit lot sizes. Okay. Well, that, I think that's getting to one of my points. I don't know that we've got enough documentation to make all those findings, at least not what I've got presented to me. We've got one sheet of paper. We uh, submitted a, a landscape plan, a specific site plan that has uh, dimensions. Um, so there's a little more detailed information that was submitted in the, in the package. And we, we may get that later. It's not up for a that's, that's right. It's not a public hearing, so you, you'll, you'll see it again after planning for it. But yes, we, did, we submitted a document that met all the criteria that's uh, noted in your checklist for submittal. Okay. And I don't think that I find all that information in my packet, so I'm suspecting that it wasn't posted on the website, so I'm not sure that everybody had all the information to make comment on the, during the public hearing. Yes. Or the, is this a rental company? No, no. This is an individual sale. So that those will be uh, three lots, and then there would be a, a, a another lot that would be the common homeowners association. Yes. Okay. Yeah. These are not rental properties. These are individual. Yes. So the lots for sale. And I guess the site is so small it's exempt from the Jordan stormwater regulations. It is, it is underneath the criteria for that. The site is generally flat. And actually, the surface water drainage from the site drains onto the office uh, medical office facility site. There's some existing swales on that property. Since the client owns that piece of property, uh, it's certainly in his interest to make sure that, that we don't do anything that impairs that piece. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any further questions on this uh, public hearing? Do you have a motion to go out of public hearing? Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All opposed, we're out of public period. And we move on to in business number one, which is the uh, involvement fund loan item that we can do a press report. Okay. So, um, just wanted to get 
clarification or clarity on an issue. I know this is a, uh, an important topic for us and something we've been working on for quite some time. And I think it is, in quotes, a find and fix uh, project. Yeah, I like it. It's pretty descriptive. It helps us figure it out quickly. Um, and so when I'm looking through all the documents, again, one of the things that I'm concerned about is whether or not the design, the, the finding part and the, and the part for designing a solution, if that's covered by these loan proceeds. I think that it is. However, it seems as though we won't, do, we won't go to closing until all the construction documents are prepared, approved, and the contract is let. So I'm concerned that we go through a lengthy find process, a process of design of the solution, and for whatever reason, the project doesn't move forward. And we have now probably spent tens of thousands of dollars on finding and designing, yet no loan proceeds for the fixing. So that's my concern, is are we exposed, will we have to contribute funds for the design portion and rely on reimbursement through this loan? And without the loan, do we end up with a finally designed solution and no money to execute it? Well, you can, the documents I just want us, I think, to acknowledge that it appears to me that we will be taking risk in doing the design prior to closing the loan. And 
the way I read that 10% up to 500,000 was not that I could increase it by 500,000, i.e. double my loan, but I could only go up by two or three thousand dollars because I'm at 400. Right. Yeah. So we could go up to 500,000, okay. but that would be without approval. If, if we found the mother of all fixed projects and felt very strongly to board we wanted to tackle the entire roster, then my recommendation at that point in time, if you wanted to move forward with the full buffet, then, then we can approach LTC. If not, then we we explore um, feasibility of phasing, which you know in various iterations of this as we've gone along and I'll thread things on that before. reason for pulling it was to make sure I understood the equation and if anyone else had any questions to understand that you know it's 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 not we will have to expend some funds before we get this loan I don't think that the loans at risk well I should never say that I mean it's always at risk but um, I, I just wanted to better understand that so. Or design. Right. Do we have a, an estimate on design funding of the project? Um, Part of it, you know, it's kind of hard to know because you're first you have to do the finding, which will cost money in and of itself. And once you find it, then you've got to design a solution. So it's hard to know. Yeah. Typically, as an estimated estimate factor, you use 10 to 15 percent, which in this case would be about 15 to 75 thousand. That's just the ballpark way. Yeah, I don't think it's anything. Would we, uh, we also be using hydrostructure in this? Yeah, we we'll would be using hydrostructures for, because hydrostructures has the, you know, what, I, what I would consider, I don't know if a drone or a robot that actually goes into the sewer and records. Well, Mr. Field was right to be concerned to ask the questions, and we all can remember the projects where we we started out and we had a fifty thousand dollar commitment in before we cut the ribbon on the project and got up to seven hundred fifty thousand. So it's good to ask these questions at the beginning. Well, and I do support the uh, the idea because I know it has a, a big impact on our wastewater plant's capacity um, when we eliminate a lot of the storm water that's presently seeping in and going to our plant getting processed um, unnecessarily um, i think we've we've shown in the past that we've had really great results with this in reducing the amount of water um, 
unintended water going to the treatment plant and having cost overruns down at the treatment plant, having upsets at the treatment plant based on the additional volume. So this will have a, a meaningful impact yeah, on that. I don't think there's any doubt that it's going to This is all, this is all uh, low and no opportunity for any conversion to credit. That's correct. Okay. I like the interest rate. Yes. Zero. Well, with that, I'll make a resolution to accept the offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. Please. Proceed.